So today we're going to talk about The Way of Kings, book one of the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I just finished my reread of this one, and uh, I've always wanted to read this again, this series. It, it was one of my first fantasy series ever. It was A Song of Ice and Fire, and then the entire Cosmere. That was my uh, introduction to the, the adult fantasy genre. So I've always wanted to revisit this and, and see where it stands now that I've read a, a variety of fantasy books uh, uh, and I have a clearer picture of the things that I like and dislike in uh, in fantasy stories. So I thought now is as great a time as any with the imminent release of book five, Winds and Truth, I believe. Winds and Truth. So I just started doing a reread of this. This being a reread, this will be filled with spoilers, but uh, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about every single plot thread in here. I'm just going to talk about things that really stood out to me the most. And uh, one of them is the prelude to the Stormlight Archive. First time I read that, I didn't know what was happening. Like, I don't know these dudes. I don't know what do these swords do. I don't understand. But now, knowing what I know now, it just has much more of an impact on me. And they really did my boy Talon wrong, man. I, I feel like I'm more appreciative of Talon this time around. I mean, I've always been. I, I've always thought that Talon is one of the most badass characters ever. But this dude is tough as hell. Like, I'm catching on things. Like, for example, like Talon uh, always being in the front lines or taking the most challenging uh, parts of their mission. I'm just so blown away by how tough this dude is. And they did him wrong, but um, I feel like the Oath Pact will play a major role in the future of the series. So uh, we'll see. But man, I'm loving Talon. Uh, I also noticed a, a, a lot of the things that flew over my head the first time I read it because obviously it's it's a it's a big book you know I'm not I'm not gonna catch on everything but a lot of the subtle hints or, or like nods to things that we won't really get to explore until like maybe two or three books down the line and with that being said I'm also noticing things that I would say imperfections or things that doesn't really work for me now, at least as well as it did in in the past. Although you know, again, this was for some of the, this was uh, one of the first fantasy series that I've read, so that might play a role in it. And now that I've read a variety of other books, I um, I have a clearer picture of my tastes as a reader. But also, I believe just reading this for the first time. I think the the Sanderlanch uh, happening to me in my formative um, fantasy reading years, it just blew my mind so much that it it just washed away all all of its uh, all of its flaws the first time around. Uh, but this time, I, I feel like I'm noticing it a lot more. And on the other side of the fence, I find myself more appreciative of of certain threads or plot threads or uh, tiny little snowballs that will culminate into um, a full-on Sanderson avalanche. So just uh, catching on to those um, those little, uh, again, hints, and then seeing how it all comes together towards the end. I find myself more appreciative of those, uh, of those moments. Uh, some scenes definitely felt more impactful to me, like Kaladin's introduction, knowing um, knowing who he becomes, it just, it just feels so different this time, especially because the first time I read it, I thought Chen or is it, it's Chen, right? It, because it's closer to Tian. It, Chen was the main character. You know, it's crazy. The first time I read this, I thought Kaladin was the most relatable character that has ever been put on paper, at least for me which was true at the time, which tells you a lot about my mental state the first time I read this, which is crazy because reading this now, I'm like, this dude is constantly daydreaming about diving headfirst into chasms. I'm like, bro, chill. To be fair, the dude was a child soldier 
And before that, he has also experienced a lot of uh, death early in his life. But he was a child soldier. He watched his brother and then his friends die in front of him, unable to save them. Then he was betrayed and sold to slavery. Then he t he became a bridge boy. Bro, it, it's fair. Like, it's, it's understandable, you know, why he wants to jump into chasms because... All of that before he turned the age, before he turned 19. People saying that he's too whiny or he doesn't seem to get any uh, better. Like it's a repeated cycle every single book. And those are, those are, um, those are great uh, points because they are true. But in, in terms of not liking that, I just, I, I don't agree with that because judging from like everything that this child has went through, I feel like, you know, like healing trauma and depression, it's not linear. It's a lot of ups and downs. It's it's a freaking, um, it's a freaking miracle that this dude is still, you know, having those ups despite everything that he has lost, everything that he has went through. So I'm like, I I love the, the Kaladin's character arc, even the, the cycle of constantly being, in uh, being or turning into that wretch and then finding uh, bravery and heroism and then turning into that wretch. I'm, I really love that, you know? Because, um, I, I mean, obviously it would have been hella disrespectful if his third ideal was him floating in the air and just be like, I am no longer mentally ill. So I get where people are coming, coming from where it's like, oh, that's a little bit too repetitive. But in, in terms of you know, real depression and trauma, it can be, you know, it, it can be. There are days where you're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm happy. And then it just hits you and you're like, oh, shit. So, you know, I, I'm really loving this character, man. So a lot of Shallan's chapters in book one are more expositional. Um, it, it has a lot to do with the world building. And for me, she doesn't really get that interesting up until book two. Book two She's awesome. Like once we start exploring her backstory, uh, her, uh, you know, with her family, her as a kid and whatnot, which again, don't get me wrong. I loved some of the chapters in here, right? As they offer a unique perspective on Yasna, Taravangian, and, and Kamsal. Kamsal, Kamsal is, is such a punk to me, you know, but I, I do like to point out a, a very specific moment, uh, a moment that I found really intimate, you know, between Shalon and Cub Sal, um, when he was putting lacquer on, on her sketch, right? It was such a unique display of intimacy for me because it, it is, it is deeply personal for Shalon, right? To, uh, her sketching, right? It's deeply personal for her. And then for someone, Cub Sal, to, you know, put his hands all over it and then just like paint locker on it. I, I think that's incredibly intimate. It reminded me of that moment or that scene from On the Waterfront between um, Marlon Brando and Eva Marie Saint, where Eva Marie Saint dropped one of her gloves and then Marlon Brando uh, picked it up and then uh, brushed off some, some leaves, some dirt uh, from it, and then he put it on. You know, it's just that unique display of intimacy. It's not in your face. It's not, hey, look at this. We're being sweet. No, it's just you You feel a sort of connection between these two people. With all that being said, Cobb Saw is still a punk. You know, I hate that dude. You know, just with his jams and he's a dumbass. I really love a lot of the characters in here, you know. Um, characters that I've always loved, but I love them even more on a reread. Uh, Dalinar, Sale... Adolin. Adolin is just Mr. Peanut Butter from Bojack Horseman. So I don't know. Uh, Renarin. I don't know how to pronounce these names because I never listened to the audiobook, but uh, I'm just going to say them however. So uh, the Lopin, uh, obviously the best gancho out there. But um, I feel like scenes with Teft, Rock, and a lot of, a lot of these characters are great, right? But for me, like scenes with Teft, every single scene with Teft is just making me tear up. I don't know why, you know, I, I swear, 
bro would scowl and I'm like, I'm in my feelings. I'm like, ah, oh, Deft, you are precious. You deserve the love and respect of your peers because you are awesome, Deft. You are awesome. Yeah, fuck Moash, man. But yeah, I, I swear, just a lot of the moments between Bridge 4, uh, especially because the, the series expands right it, it, it's we're seeing these characters on a bigger scale so it's it's really it's really nice to see them again as bridge four you know th these dudes just be sitting in a in a circle eating stew and i'm like that's beautiful oh my god uh but yeah man uh, as, as speaking of beautiful let's talk about what is not laurel laurel to me like i was indifferent towards her like at the beginning I was just like, uh, the, at least the first time I read this, I was pretty indifferent towards Laro. But this time I'm just like, oh, you're just as big of a punk as Capsule, man. I, I, I'm sorry. She is. She, she is. Like reading Kaladin's flashback chapters uh, is getting me so excited to read Oathbringer. Even though like maybe that scene is not as satisfying. Interestingly enough, I find myself more fond of Tien this time around. The first time I read this, I was just like, okay, TN, TN died, cool, whatever, that's sad. But here, I, I think his scenes, like knowing that he's sort of, you know, he could have been, he could have been, he could have been a contender instead of a bum, which is what I am, Charlie. He could have been, um, a, 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 is it a light weaver? He could have been a surge binder, right? Um... Yeah, one of my favorite coulda bins, along with L.O. Carr. Man, fuck Moash. So as I've said, a lot of the scenes in here felt more impactful this time around. Uh, one of them, Kaladin, you know, failing to save a kid. Him sitting at um, at their front porch and, and just like really struggling. Struggling to accept that he failed to save a life that he can't save everyone, you know, which, which is a lesson that it, it took him how many books to, to, to learn. And I, I just, I love that, right? What happens later on, it just feels more impactful for me at this time around. Like, I, I can't wait to read, um, read the next books, but, uh, yeah, it just, you, you, you understand how hard it is for him to accept that, you know, from the beginning, from when he was a kid. It, it it's a lesson that took him years, a, a decade to learn or to accept that he can't save everyone. So I know one of the most iconic lines was, honor's dead, but I'll see what I can do and then jump into, that is so cool. It's one of the coldest lines ever in fantasy. But I feel like um, when he was strung up, you know, he was strung up facing certain death, and and Syl was like, do you want to be a miracle? And then Kaladin was like, no, but for them I will be. That is just as cold. I mean, that's cold. Now, speaking of Syl, I love Syl. You know, I, I, I've always loved Syl. But I feel like later on, I don't know why, but I found her annoying later on. But I, I feel like that's going to change this time around because... I'm just appreciate again appreciating this character a lot more. And the first time I read this, you know, just seeing Syl and her and her tiny self standing in front of Kaladin, and trying to ward off the the storm wall. It's just it's so heartwarming. It's so sweet and cute. And then later on, her fighting Death Spren, you know, uh, defending Kaladin. It's just so sweet. That's so dope, man. I, I, I love it. Also, the first time I read this, I wasn't really paying that much attention to the sunlit man. But uh, now I am. You know, now I am. Now I'm like, oh, okay. That is interesting. That is interesting what this character is doing or how this character saw Kaladin at first and then seeing, uh, seeing him in the sunlit man just be like, have the utmost respect and love for Kaladin that is really dope um Gaz this time around felt so much more redeemable than the first time I 
Also, I, I think him seeing those those movements from his uh, the, the the blind side, the peripheral view of his blind side. I feel like, is that um, is that uh, sort of foreshadowing his light weaver status? Is that it? I think so. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a reach, but uh, that's what I got from it. But uh, uh, who else? Liren. Liren, I feel, is a flawed but excellent father. Like, he is the epitome of, like, I did the best I could with the resources that I had. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I love Liren as well. Like, yes, there are some... There are some flaws with his logic about being a pacifist or whatnot, but, um, and that's more pertaining to the current situation where like the desolation, there's war, you gotta go, uh, gotta go defend yourself or fight, uh, people. Um, but, uh, again, it, it's one of those, I guess, uh, questions, open-ended questions where like, okay, he makes some great points, but... Would that really work? You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's, uh, my experience, uh, rereading The Way of Kings, book one of the Stormlight Archive. I'm going to go, um, read a few books and then hop on to Words of Radiance, which I'm extremely excited, uh, excited for. But, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I guess I'll see you soon. Peace.